Last year we took a look at the Viper 3D printer, which was Anycubic's newest offering in their FDM lineup. It included automatic bed leveling, a powder coated PEI bed, and a much better extruder, and overall I really enjoyed my time with that printer. A few months ago Anycubic reached out to me letting me know they were releasing a new 3D printer called the Cobra, sticking with their sort of snake theme, and asked if I was interested in testing out this machine and sharing my thoughts. After my positive experience with the Viper, and seeing that the Cobra had a direct drive extrusion system, I was excited and I agreed to test out the printer. I've been playing around with the Cobra for a couple of months now and it was actually featured in one of last month's video which was how to print with wood filled filaments. So in today's video we will take a dive into the Anycubic Cobra. We'll take a look at the printer's specs, what setup and initial calibration was like, how it prints, and I will give you my overall thoughts based off my time with this printer so far. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting off like we typically do, let's first run through the specs of the Cobra. The Cobra has a slightly smaller build volume than the Viper at 250 by 220 by 220 millimeters. The printer's frame is primarily constructed of aluminum extrusions, but the top bar as well as all of the blue and sort of red parts are made out of injection molded plastic. The extrusion system is direct drive and the closest thing it reminds me of is something like a Titan style extruder. The hot end is not all metal and the closest thing that it reminds me to is an A3D V6 heater block. I did also swap out the nozzle during my testing and can confirm that it uses a standard V6 thread so you can use any V6 compatible nozzles on the Cobra. As far as cooling, there is one fan on the heatsink and there is a larger fan on the back that is sort of a blower style fan that is for your part cooling. The Cobra comes with a magnetic powder coated PEI bed, which is my absolute favorite build surface for your day-to-day -day 3D printing, and the bed is mounted to an aluminum frame down below without any bed leveling knobs, which is thanks to its automatic bed leveling. While the Viper used a strain gauge for its leveling, the Cobra uses an inductive probe or an inductive sensor. I had no issues at all with my leveling on the Viper, but the inductive sensor on the Cobra has also worked really well for me. The Cobra has built-in belt tensioners as well as power loss recovery, but no filament runout sensor. Roller wheels are used for motion and the Z-axis rides up and down using a singular lead screw. Interfacing with the Cobra is done through its 4.3 inch touchscreen and although I am not crazy at all about the jingle it plays every single time you turn it on, it is a very responsive touchscreen and menu. You have the choice of printing directly over micro SD card using the screen or you could hook the printer up over USB. As far as firmware goes, I believe the Cobra is running a version of Marlin, but through my initial search I was only able to find a compiled bin file. Flipping the machine over, I removed the plastic cover that houses the controller. Inside I found a fairly large 32-bit board labeled TriGorilla Pro A version 1.0.4. Drivers are mounted to the board and there are a couple of expansion ports. One of them looks like it's for a second Z motor, so if for some reason you do want to mount a secondary Z axis motor and lead screw, that is something that you may be able to do. There's also a replaceable fuse and a very large fan for removing the heat. The PSU was mounted separately, so I didn't take it apart, but I did verify that it is a 24 volt system. The Cobra came packaged very nicely and was also very simple to assemble. You're basically taking the top portion of the printer and using four bolts to bolt it to the bottom portion of the printer, then attaching the spool holder and a couple of screws for the screen and then plugging in a few cables. I would say all in all, 15 to 20 minutes is probably what it'll take you from the time you get it out of the box to having it fully assembled and ready to print. Turning the printer on for the first time, you'll want to run a leveling sequence, which will create a 25 point mesh. It was at this point that I ran into sort of my first issue with the Cobra. I didn't realize this at first when looking at the Cobra, but it's actually using those trinamic drivers that it has for sensorless homing. The way this works is that when the hot end and bed reaches their travel limits, the printer is able to detect either a skip step or stall, letting the machine know that it is home. However, in my case, at least initially, the bed proved to be a bit too sensitive and it would false trigger thinking that it was home, but it hadn't fully homed the bed yet. 
I was able to pretty much resolve this by just adjusting the belt tension on the Y axis as well as loosening the eccentric nut on the roller wheels ever so slightly, but it did catch me off guard initially. The initial leveling process will take a couple of minutes to probe all the points, but since the first time I've leveled this printer, I have not had to re-level it since, thanks to it being sort of bolted to that aluminum frame beneath it, and it has been incredibly consistent. Once leveled, you'll need to set your Z offset by taking just something like a piece of printer paper. For the powder coated PEI beds, typically you want the nozzle to be a little bit closer so that way the filament gets sort of a good smush into that first layer. But you can also live step or baby step during your printing process. So if for some reason your nozzle is a little bit too far away or too close, you can quickly and easily adjust that as soon as your first print starts. Once done with the leveling and the Z offset, I loaded in some blue PLA and fired off the test print that came on the micro SD card, which is the Anycubic OWL model that they've had on their printers for many years. The Cobra is definitely on the quieter side, which is a plus, at least in my opinion, and I was very pleased with the print result or the print quality of their first test print. Once I was done with the test print, I was ready to slice up some models of my own, so I took the included micro SD card and hopped over to the computer. Anycubic does provide Cura profiles for the Cobra, but I really wanted to use Prusa Slicer, so I started off with the Artillery Genius profile and just made some slight tweaks to it. I actually went right from printing that test file to printing with wood fill on the Cobra, which did require swapping over to a 0.6 millimeter nozzle after some trial and error, but I was very happy with the end results. If you haven't seen that video and you want to see more about sort of the process and what the prints look like, I will have a link in the description over to that video for you. Once I was done with the wood fill, I swapped back over to a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and loaded in some yellow polyterra filament. With this, I printed out the ornate Cubone model from Chaos Cortec, as well as a container Revo nozzle holder with threads. The Cubone model was fairly large and detailed, but the Cobra did a really good job. The only standout imperfection is on the bottom teeth due to the snug supports I used, which could have used a bit more reinforcement. Other than that, the model turned out awesome. The Revo nozzle holder turned out perfect and the threads are buttery smooth. I then switched over to some Jesse Blood Red PLA and printed out a Dragon Bust. This really is a testament to how far supports and support algorithms have evolved over the years. Due to the horns on this model, it required quite a bit of support material and Back in the day, printing this would have been an absolute nightmare. Using the Prusa Slicer Snug Supports, it still took some time to remove, but it did a fantastic job and supported all the areas that it needed without really leaving any blemishes on the finished part. This model from Onu is a very cool one, and links to this and the rest of the models shown in this video will be linked in the description. I also printed out two Cali Dragon models with this filament. I used the exact same slicer settings, except one of them had Z-Hop enabled and one of them had Z-Hop disabled. Ironically, I actually think that the print with Z-Hop enabled turned out better. It does have a bit more stringiness, but for some reason, the layer consistency seems just a bit better on that print. After this, I switched over to TPU and printed out a blue doorstop as well as two orange phone cases in TPU. These were two different TPUs from two separate manufacturers, but they were both 95A shore hardness and I used the exact same settings on all of them. Extrusion was really consistent on the Cobra with TPU and the overall experience of printing with TPU on this was much better than a lot of other 3D printers I've used and I didn't do any tweaking at all other than slightly loosening the tension on the extrusion tensioner. There is still some definite room for improvement, especially with my retraction settings as well as the temperature and also on the phone case there's some quite obvious pillowing so I need to either increase infill, change infill, or just add an additional top layer, but still the printer did a fantastic job and some of the bridging on the open ports on this phone case blew my mind. I did not think it was going to be able to bridge this so well. Lastly, I dried out and threw some older eSun PETG on the Cobra. I've been wanting to design a mount for my little wow stick electric screwdriver for some time, but I just have not had a chance to do so yet. 3D Print Beginner shared a case last month that he printed out over on Twitter for his wow stick that looked way better than the clunky box mine came with, so I printed out the body in that blue PETG and the hinges in a silver PLA. There was one blemish from what is likely the PETG that built up on the nozzle and dripped onto the part mid print, but other than that, it turned out great. I've been really impressed with the consistency of the prints and extrusion of the Cobra, as well as the machine's ability to just maintain leveling. I'm just still have so many memories of printers that you print a couple of times and the leveling gets thrown out of whack, but the 
mesh bed leveling and the sensor they have on here seems to be incredibly reliable or at least worked well and the fact that there is not leveling knobs on here means that your bed should really not be able to shift around too much so if you get a good mesh you should be good for a very long time. I've really enjoyed using the Anycubic Cobra over the past couple of months and with the exception of the initial rogue sensorless homing it's been a pretty seamless experience. My main critiques are pretty minimal and that's again that I don't like the jingle sound that the machine makes every time you turn it on. I wish there was a way to just disable it. I don't know why they thought that it was necessary to add that. And then completely not related to how the printer actually prints, but I think that the overall look of a unit is important as well. And I just like the Vipers look a bit more than the Anycubic Cobra. Something about the injection molded plastic they went with, I think it's the blue and the contrast with the red just sort of makes it look a little bit more toyish to me and in reality it's a tool that might be just personal preference. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Am I wrong? Do you like the look of this? And if you have seen this and the Viper, which one, do you, which styling do you like better? The only other thing that's also quite small that I miss on the Cobra that the Viper had was the Viper has a tiny little LED inside of the hot end area that makes it really simple to see your first layer, especially if you're not in a room with bright studio lights. And it's not difficult to turn on bright lights and look at your first layer, but I thought that it was a pretty cool thing and I wish they had carried it over to the Cobra as well. Overall, it is a welcome addition to the Anycubic lineup and I'm really hoping that Anycubic releases an all metal heat break that will allow you to convert this PTFE lined Hodden to an all metal if you should want to print with higher temp materials. At right around $300, this is a solid choice for somebody that's either looking to get their first 3D printer or if you're looking to expand your current lineup. And that has been the Anycubic Cobra. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I answered the majority of your questions. If you have any questions about anything that I covered or maybe did not cover, let me know in the comments down below and I will do my absolute best to answer your questions. Also, if you're interested in finding out more about the Cobra or purchasing one for yourself, I will have links down below in the description over to where you can do so. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel furthermore, I'll place links down below in the description over to our Patreon, where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.